What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Avocat Studios. I'm your host, Sir Stormchild, a night in the fight against boredom. And today we're definitely talking about more Stargate because it's a new week. It's a new Stargate. Good enough. Carl, roll it. <laughs> oh, have you got? Meow. You went a little uh, SpongeBob on that one there, Carl. Did you like it? It was delicious. Let's do this. All right. So uh, this episode is really good. It's called The Other Guys. It's like the movie, only not at all and set in space. Uh, it's it. <clears throat> You know those uh, episodes of uh, Star Trek that uh, it's it it was it's like later on in the series, I think it was uh, Next Generation and some others, um, where they didn't focus on the main cast so much. They had like these ancillary characters that kind of built the world, and it was their kind of story. Um, this is very similar. It's called The Other Guys because it's about the other guys. You know, makes sense, right? Okay, so basic plot. This dude uh, orders his uh, team, his uh, first prime, which is basically like a general who's got like the gar gold thing carved into his head and then like they brand it and it's a whole mess of just pain. Um, but they're used to it because they're Jaffa. Uh, he sends his people out to go capture SG-1 because he has intel, you know, that they're there. And uh, SG-1 is just there babysitting these uh, scientists who are working on a ring platform. It's uh, Ring platforms are the teleportation things. They're like mini Stargates. Um, but like this, if you're on the ground and going up to the ship, instead of like, oh, beam me up, Scotty, you got to stand on a ring platform. So it's like a centralized thing. Um, and you can like hijack it and shit and all kinds of whatnot. Um but anyway, he sends them there. There's a big gunfight. They they tell like the scientists, "Hey man, like stay out of here. Don't come around us. You know, we got this." And then they like those dudes see him get kidnapped. They're like, "Oh shit, we got to save them." And this guy, if you if you ever watched um, the Red Green Show, that's Harold. Uh, he's the uh, nerdy nephew, and he is obsessed with SG One. <laughs> He's obsessed with like Carter. He's got like a crush on her, as you can see from like the kissing thing. Um, he, he's not. He's very bright. They're both very very smart. Um, he comes back in a later episode for Avenger 2.0. Uh, Billingsley, who is his, the friend Coombs, does not come back. Uh, he doesn't come back because I think by that point he was already and works to become a uh, Doctor Flox on uh star trek enterprise which i thought he did a great job that that needed another season to finally finish it off that would have been great um this whole entire episode is just nerds bickering at each other and it's so funny it's so well written um uh, you'll notice like when they like they try to infiltrate um the ship to get to get them free um and then they're like hey man why did you come get us we didn't need you. We told you to stay on the planet. Why don't you ever listen to us? We're like, well, we had to save you. He's like, dude, all right, fine. The guy who came down to try to attack us, he's a Tok'ra. So we're good. Uh, Tok'ra are the, they're, they're the good guys, essentially. They're against all the Goa'uld. Actually, Tok'ra means against Ra, which Ra was the one they killed in the movie. Um, he was like the head of all this weird shit. Um, so like they, they go there to try to save him, And then, you know, things ensue. Uh, there's a whole mutiny that goes down. Kansu gets shot. Um, they bring out the pain stick, which is this weird stick that like, like when they touch you with it, it's got like three prongs on it. Like you squeal in agony and then light shoots out of your mouth. I don't, I don't, I don't know why it, it just looks cool. It looks kill. Sure. Um, and they try to get away with hiding in their outfits of these, uh, other Tokra operatives who are the Jaffa helping the dude, uh, they get murdered. So they put on their clothes and there's got like a big hole in it. And they're just walking around. Hey, how you doing, Steve? How you doing? We're good. We're good. They end up like knocking, knocking the other guys unconscious. 
um, with uh, the Zat guns, which one shot stuns, two shot kills, three shots to disintegrates a rule they gave up about season two. Um, it, it was just kind of silly. There's no time limit between the things. Um, there's pointless. Um, they're trapped in like a force field room. They find uh, a way into the central operating, you know, this thing. <clears throat> it's this big computer thing. And then it's like all written in like hieroglyphics. And apparently you can program computers like that. Um, they get out. Jonas is stumbling through the bushes. <laughs> um, Folger's or Folger gets out. That's this dude, and uh, Billings that he stays behind. Coombs, he's not staying behind because he wants to, but because somebody needs to let them out of the out of the you know, between the force shields. And he's about to get out, and he opens up the door, and there's just a shitload of Jafai outside of his door. And he's like, uh oh. And then they start pounding on it, you know, trying to get in there, you know, pounding on it as much as you can. A piece of styrofoam made to look like cardboard and try not to hit it that hard, you know. Um, and then they, they, SG-1, once they're free, they get out, they go back for them. Everybody's happy, except for the uh, Harak dude, the uh, first prime who is, he was a, he's really good. He's in a couple of other episodes because he is more, he follows the other head god, god, uh, Anubis. Uh, Anubis has become the more prevalent bad guy, uh, especially since like uh, season five. I think uh, there's like rumors about him, but like season four, season five, he like starts coming around more and more. And um, he's bait at the end of. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, at the end of the season, you really get to see him. And he's like a formless blob, like a, a bunch of energy mass being held together inside of a personal shield that gives him somewhat human form because he was a Goa'uld who attained enlightenment and ascended. But then he was such an asshole that got so much power because of that. He took all that knowledge and fought against the ancients themselves single-handedly, and they could not bring him down. They all they could do was like force him between the realms of like, you know, ascension and not. Like he has to live between these two, and he's cursed to do so. And like he's going from like body to body, like he's fucking Voldemort, unless he has like the personal shield. And uh, that's Anubis. You eventually find out who he is, and Daniel's not happy because he kind of becomes friends with him on a weird, weird, like, dream cafe thing, um, which we meet Oma Adesala again, which I know I've mentioned her, and then you've never probably seen it, but she's just you know, some white chick who keeps showing up. She's very nice and lovely, and she's, like, her name, like, translates into Mother Earth, I think, or something. Um, So they... they you know, they, they shoot a bunch. There's a bunch of nerdy talk. There's like, you know, Jack yells him like, you enter that sentence with a preposition. It's very, very nerdy episode. There are a lot of like mistakes that they do that are very intentional. And then it gets to this sequence once they're that the um, thing. It's pretty obvious the way I cut it because um, it's kind of how it goes down because um, they go to the award ceremonies like even though you disobeyed me. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. And then Carter comes over and then basically starts making out with Harold. <laughs> and uh, then it clicks back to what's actually going on. He's like, dude, pay attention, geek, nerd. And like, they're they're definitely friends. <laughs> There's a one point where they uh, he yells at him. He's like, well, I can't believe you 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 don't worship the, at the altar of Roddenberry. And he's like, well, yeah, or... Yeah, it was Coombs, uh, Bill Billingsley, who eventually goes on to do a Stargate series. Um, he's like, oh, uh, Harold uh, just yells at him. He's like, man, like you would probably be a Klingon. He's like, no, Vulcan, Vulcan. And like, you know, like how adamant, you know, some nerds can get when you get their obsession wrong. It's really funny. Um, that's why I, I have always said that I like Star Wars. I do. I don't currently like what they're doing with it right now. It seems a little, a little bit they're detracting the more they're putting into it, which it seems weird, but that's also how a lot of things go down. Um, you have, you start off with a great premise and then you kind of dribble it away. 
that does happen in this series, but it takes about eight seasons to get there. And then nine and 10 kind of feel a little bit weird. Um, but if you add on the two extra movies, continuum and arc of truth, it's, it's a closed nexus. That's really wonderful. And then you add in, uh, um, uh, Atlantis and it's, it's great. Uh, and then you add on like universe and I have, I'll get around to that. I have my own problems. Sex is not a plot line. That's all I'm saying. Literally. They just find this like thing and then they transfer into other people's bodies and then they just bang each other's wives. And I'm like, that's not a fucking plot. It's basically half the plots in the fucking, the show misfits, but there was superpowers and dead people and zombies. And that shit was fucking wild. Um, but anyway, I told you I can I can't pay attention for shit. Um, this great this episode is great. Um, all the actors in it are good. The soundtrack again is very good. I want to say it's directed by Annie Makita, but I probably don't remember that right. It's very silly. It's very like focused. Um, it's not like the other one was all meta, but it's it's still very meta. If you're, you're nerdy about everything. Um, and then when he comes back for Avenger 2.0, that's a whole host of like cool stuff that goes on. This, this show is great. That's why I'm talking about it every week. <laughs> uh, it, it's so good. Like it's so good. And it's so crappy at the same time. I, I can't get enough. Love you, Canada. Stay strong up there. You maple bastards. Um, so if I explained everything, Great. If I explain nothing, awesome. If you watch this video, do the like, do the subscribe, whatever. I don't, you know, I'm a small channel. I get that. But, you know, I like to share this with more weirdos, much as like yourself, because you are awesome. Don't ever forget that. Yes, I stole that from whatculture.com because Jules is awesome. Um, <laughs> stay safe, guys, and I will see you beautiful motherfuckers in the next one. All right. I guess. Why did Coca Cola make Tic Tacs? Tastes like Coca Cola Tic Tacs. Mmm, flat Coke. That's not gross. Yeah, it's fine. What the hell are you talking about? This is an outro. Oh, is this the part where we're supposed to be quiet for no reason? Yeah. Meow. I told you, stay out of my yogurt.